Hello students, welcome to Engineers Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that the end of the coaxial cable AB is attached to the pole AB which is strengthened by the guy wires AC and AD. Knowing that the tension in wire AC is 120 pound, determine the components of the force exerted by this wire on the pole. This is important, we need to find the components of the force exerted by the wire on the pole and the angles theta x theta y and theta z there the force forms with the coordinate axis so now first of all i need to draw the x and z axis here so x axis here at the end of uh, at that point a and then we will have the z axis so this is our z axis here now if we look into this uh, AC cable, so this, if we cut this AC cable, so this AC cable is going to apply 120 Newton force at that point A on the pole in this direction. And similarly, if we cut this rope, and, and so if you want to find the force on, the, on this point C, so then we will have the tension force in this direction of same magnitude. So let me cut the rope. So let's say that I cut the rope somewhere here. So then we will have the 120 pound force acting like this on the pole. Let's say that force is equal to 120 pound. Now, as we can see that the pole is vertical, which is obvious the pole is in the Y direction. And this particular BC line the line which joins the base of the pole to this point C, this line is on the ground, that is in the XZ plane. So this means that if this pole is vertical and this is lying on the surface, then th there is 90 degree angle here. So now if we consider this triangle ABC, then this is a right angle triangle. And AC is the hypotenuse of that triangle. And uh, similarly, so so if this is 60 degree, th this is 90, then this angle is 30. So this means that this force F is making 30 degree with the axis of the pole. So we can say that, uh, let me draw the axis of the pole. This is the axis of the pole. So with the axis of the pole, um, this force F is making how much? 30 degrees. So we can resolve this force F into two components. It will have one component in this direction and this one will be f of y this will be f of y and this will be the cos component since this is attached to this 30 degree angle in terms of 30 degree this is the cos component so we will have f y and then we will have this f horizontal component the component which is lying on the surface is let's say f h so we will have one component like this this purple one and we will have one component like this So this one is f of y in the negative uh, y and then we have f h and we can show this f h here as well right this f h is acting somewhere here like this and further it is given that this b c line along which f h is acting is making 20 degree with the positive x axis right so so here we have that x axis let me write that this is my axis x axis and this is my z axis the green one so now we can say that f of y is the cost component it is acting in the negative y so we will write minus so this will be f cos of 30 or we can say this is minus 120 cos of 30 so this is f y similarly f h so f h is the sine component so we can say this is f sine of 30 which is 120 sine of 30 now this is f h right or we can say this is f h so now we can we can further resolve this f h into two rectangular components since this f h is acting in the uh, x y plane so now if I drop a perpendicular from this parallel to the y, parallel to the z axis, so we will have two components. So we will have one component like this, and we will have one component like this. So this one will be fx, 
and this one will be fz so let me show those components so we will have two components like this so this one is fx and this one is fz so now we we are given that this angle is 20 now fx is adjacent to the 20 angle so fx is the cost component of fh so we can say that fx is fh cos of 20 degrees and now fh is 120 sine of 30 this is fh so 120 sine of 30 cos of 20 and similarly fz this is the fz which is opposite to this angle so this will be the sine component of fh so we can say that fz is fh sine of 20 again fh is 120 sine of 30 sine of 20 so now we can find the magnitudes so fy fy is minus 120 cos of 30 so that is 104 so we can say that fy is approximately equal to minus 104 pounds this is fy fx is 120 sine of 30 cos of 20 so this is 56 so fx is 56.38 or we can say this is approximately 56 newton or uh, let's say let's write it to one decimal place so this is 56.3 newton similarly f of uh, z is this 120 sine of 30 sine of 20 so this is 20.5 so f z is 20.5 newton and f z is also in the negative z this is in the negative z this is the positive z so this is the negative z so we need to put minus sign here so this is minus so this is fx and this is fz <clears throat> now we can write this uh, force f as a cartesian vector so we can write that f vector is equal to fx i plus f y j plus f z k and fx is 56.3 i f y is negative minus 104 j and fz is minus 20.5 k so this is force vector now we know that um, since in the second part we are required to find theta x theta y and theta z the angle of this uh, force f with the positive x y and z axis so the if i draw the components if i draw this fx component here now we will have that fx component here so let me draw that fx component like this so this is our fx and then we will have fz so somewhere here we will have fz like this and let me remove this fh so this is fz and this one is fx so now if i draw a um, perpendicular let's say this is my force f until point c now if i draw a perpendicular like this if if this particular line is making 90 degree and if this angle is theta x then fx is adjacent to theta x and we can always say that fx is the cost component of this force f in terms of theta x so we can say that we can always say that fx is f cos of theta x since theta x is the angle of this force f with the positive x axis and fx is the component along the x axis so fx will always be adjacent to this theta x angle so fx will always be the cost component of that force f and similarly uh, f of y and f of z so we can say that fx is f cos of 30 uh, theta x f y is f cos of theta y and f z is equal to f cos of theta z now we want to find theta x theta y and theta z so cos of theta x is equal to fx divided by f fx magnitude is 56.3 f magnitude is given which is 120 so this is the the magnitude 120 similarly cos of 
um, theta y is f y so f y is minus 140 divided by f which is 120 and similarly cos of theta z is f z now f z is minus 20.5 divided by 120 similarly taking cos inverse of all these fractions so theta x will be cos inverse of this fraction and similarly theta y will be cos inverse and similarly theta z so let's find it using calculator so cos inverse of uh, 56.3 divided by 120 this gives me theta x equals to 62 degrees approximately and uh, theta y is minus 104 divided by 120 this is 150 and similarly um, theta z is minus 20.5 so this is 99 so this is approximately 100 100 degrees so now we can see that this force f is making 62 degrees with the positive x-axis 150 degrees with positive y-axis and 100 degree with the uh, positive z-axis so this angle is 100 degrees so these are the components f of x f of y and f of z and this is theta x theta y and theta z that this force f max with the positive x y and z axis so this is the solution of this particular problem i hope this will help you in your learning let me know in in the comments if this helps and do subscribe engineers academy for the solution of such more problems from vector mechanics for engineers by Bear and johnston